Hey guys, this is uh, Vince with Green Joe. So on this video, what we're doing is we're basically covering, I call it Espresso Machine 101, some general overviews of the machine, um, introduction to it, and then a tour of the machine so you can kind of get an idea on um, how different systems work. Um, so the espresso machine was invented by, it actually the history behind it is, uh, it was in 1884. There was a gentleman named Angelo uh, Moriando. The legend says that this guy's working at a train station and he has a 10 o'clock train that um, leaves every day and he wants, and there was, there's this one guy that wants to get um, a, a cup of coffee um, every day, but back then they would have to do a whole pot. And so he, what he was trying to do was develop, um, one cup of coffee, be, be able to, to make one cup of coffee for, for that one guy that's trying to grab the 10 o'clock express. And that's why they named it espresso. Okay. So that's the, I, you know, the folk tale behind it. I don't know. You know, most, most things just say, uh, this guy, uh, Moriando, came up with it in 1884, and a couple other people added to the patent and made it more of a commercial use type of machine, but that's kind of the back history behind it. It's a fun story to know. But anyhow, so the general tour of the machine, so here what I'm using is my Astoria Divina. Um, as you can see, I went through, It's a, this is a two group. You can see I have two porta, um, two, two porta, porta filters here, two heads on it, and uh, so it's a two group machine which generally by default means that it's a 220 volt. Uh, generally, um, when I see that, that's what I think of. Um, and uh, a little bit more on it, you can see I've, I've pulled off all the panels so we can really get a good look at this machine here. In fact, I kind of like it this way. It's a little bit, it has that like industrial look. And so I'm thinking about lining it with neon lights. That'll be a different project, but, uh, but anyhow, um, so here you have steam wands. You can see the machine's on, it's producing steam. Um, I have two uh, filter heads. Uh, this right here is, um, it's a, a water release valve. What it does is it releases water um, into the boiler manually. There's a pump in there that automatically do it. Anytime you hit your Americano, typically you'll hear it. In the back there, there'll be a, an automatic switch that'll pop on. Let's see if we can get that to go here. There you go. So there's the automatic pump. Basically what that's doing is it's automatically filling um, your boiler with cold water, but um, this little valve, you push it in and it does the same thing manually if that thing ever goes out. I've had it gone out, so it's good to know. Um, okay, so this is just uh, the drip tray here. Um, you kind of see some wires kind of hanging here. Sorry about that. Back here is going to be a little glass eye. And this it has a little ball in there that floats and that lets you know how much water you have in your boiling system. It does, mine doesn't have any measurement. It would be really nice if that had a measurement to it, but it doesn't, so. Okay, and so back here is the pump and the motor. I'm gonna pull it in just a second and show you guys that. So that's the pump and the motor. There's some electronical stuff on this side, electrical stuff, excuse me, electrical stuff on this side. And on the side, there's a little bit more electrical. Okay, so here we have a top view of the boiler here, okay. Uh, we'll just start off right here. So this particular piece, um, what this one does here, let me kind of step back so you can see the whole boiler system. So my my uh, side panel, my top panels are off. And uh, so this this first one just goes to the steam wand. That's all that one does. It goes over here, branches out to the steam wand, provides steam. Oh, sorry. Provides steam, provides steam to, uh, to the steam wand. That's it. It's on top. Steam, of course, is on top. So... This is a safety release valve. Um, basically, it releases um, hot water from the boiler or pressure from the boiler and stops the boiler from exploding. Um, this is a level probe. And when you have it all the way in, um, basically it stops, um, 
So water will rise to the end of this probe is basically how it works. So if you want the probe all the way down at the bottom, then the water stops rising and the rest of your boiler is filled with steam. If you have the probe all the way at the top, then the water keeps rising. So you got a bunch of water and you got a little bit of steam. Why that's important, um, if you want to be able to make more Americanos, you're going to need more water in the system. So you want to pull the probe up. If you want to be able to steam more lattes, then you want to um, have more steam in the system and you want to push the probe down. Fair enough. This tube runs all the way down here. I hope you can see in there. All the way to right into that solenoid. There's a solenoid in there up at the top. Let me see if I can. Uh, solenoid right up here. And what that solenoid does is it mixes hot water and cold water for my Americanos. And as you can see, I have my. So my solenoid is adjusted so that it produces a lot of hot water. So I pull hot water from there and solenoid's how you change it. But, it, but this is the tube that, that affects that. Um, let's see, this is another safety release valve. Um, this one is a pressure gauge. Um, it's a gauge for one in the front of my pressure. Um, this is my second steam wand. And then uh, let's see if I can get over here. And then this, this, this other one measures the water. That's where that one is. Water measurement on that one. Okay. Okay, so this is my water coming in. You're going to see it come in, in right through here. Okay. Comes in here. And the first thing it does is it connects here and it splits. You're going to see a split here. Okay. The first split is going to go to the lower hydraulic assembly. It's going to shoot some cold water up into your group heads. It's gonna move down here, get resisted before it goes into the flow meters. So that's the first step in uh, essentially the uh, low hydraulic assembly. Then down here, going back to this split, here it shoots off and this one, if you can see that, this one goes into the, the boiler system. So this split goes into the boiler system, okay, and then this is a relief valve, okay? So it's just relieving some pressure. This one right here allows for a manual override to fill your machine. That's what this does, is it fills your, it fills your machine manually, okay? So you can add more water to your, get, get this out of there. So you can add more water manually by hitting this knob right here. It just opens up that valve, dumps water straight into it. And you can tell there's water in the system because you got this floating ball right here, okay? So that's how you know you got water into the system. This little solenoid right here, what this basically with the job of this one is to ensure that your uh, your hot water, or excuse me, your boiler never goes empty. I had once made the mistake when I was, uh... okay, I think I was telling you about, I was telling you about the, uh, the, the incident uh, at Helix Coffee. I had made a mistake of leaving my wand open overnight. Um, what had happened was I did a, a late night catering gig for a movie set and I was working Helix at the time. They paid really good. So I took the machine out of the coffee shop, brought it down into a local movie set, served, uh, I think it was like Netflix or something, served them all coffee took the machine back, loaded it back into my coffee shop, plugged in my water, plugged in my uh, drain line, plugged in my electric, and left. And what had happened was one of the wands was open, but I didn't know it at the time because the boiler um, had not uh, generated steam pressure yet. The boiler was cold. It had water in it, but it was a cold boiler. And so what happened is I left, I went home, got some sleep, um, not much that night. I think I came back maybe three or four hours later. And when I walked up to Helix, um, I I could hear it before I could see it. It was this hissing sound. And as I got closer, uh, I can see in the windows of Helix, there's condensation on the windows. In each one of the windows on my front door I had, a, I had a glass door. So, so I open, I open the door to, to the coffee shop and I'm, you know, my first thought was like a pipe busted or something. I open up the door and this cloud just came 
rushing out, right? This cloud of, uh, I thought it was smoke, but it wasn't, it was, um, it was steam. And so what had happened is I left the steam one open and when the uh, boiler reached temperature, it started firing off um, steam. And in that process, what had happened is water had got, um, had disrupted some of the circuitry board and, um, and sh sort sh uh, short circuited circuit the uh, uh, part of the board in here. And so it stopped relaying to the boiler to fill the boiler. And so there's, there's an auto relay that your machine will auto automatically pump water into the boiler to prevent the boiler from running dry. Um, that didn't happen. And so my boiler ran dry. And what it did is it cracked the, uh, the heating element. And uh, so it, it caused me all sorts of mess. Uh, basically what was happening is um, I was not able to generate pressure. Um, I can push the motor, I didn't have any problem pushing buttons and pulling out water, but my steam pressure eventually dropped com completely. And um, there was nothing but cold water coming out of my shots. My shots were just murky and blah, blah, blah. And so I had to take it in and uh, diagnose the, uh, the boiler system or the, the heating element. And he did that externally. He was able to determine by uh, putting some electrodes to the back of that boiler, uh, he was able to determine that that boiler was not getting um, electricity like it was supposed to. And the reason why is because it was cracked in half. And so the circuit wasn't a circuit anymore. It stopped being a circuit and essentially um, it wasn't heating the, the water anymore. So we replaced that. We replaced the circuitry. It was, a, it was the circuitry. It was a pretty expensive um, repair. Um, and that all happened because I left the, the boiler open. Um, now, if I was smart, I, I would have seen this little ball here drop. But at the time, I didn't really understand it. And that's also where I learned what this was for. I didn't know what that one was for. And that's, a, that's the manual override. It puts, it puts uh, water into the, uh, the boiler system if your, your solenoid isn't doing it for you. So essentially, <clears throat> the things that you need to consider is that espresso machines, um, they cover two different temperatures. You have um, what comes out of the, um, the group head here, and that's about 200 degrees. Um, and then you have the water that comes out of the steam wand. And the steam wand comes out at 240 plus, you know, so it's above boiling temperature, which is why it's pressurized. Um, so there's two different temperatures going on within this machine, one for brewing the coffee and then one for the steam. And what a heat exchanger does is it allows uh, machines to have two different temperatures with one boiler, okay? It's just a, to me, it's kind of an ingenious invention. But essentially, if I wanted two different temperature, then conventional wisdom would say that you get two different boilers. You heat this boiler to 200 degrees, you heat this boiler to above 200 so that you create steam. And that's what two boiler systems do. It's a fine way to do it. But you have two different heating elements. Thus, you're increasing the amount of energy that you need for that system. And in the mobile application, you're going to learn right out of the gate, you want to reduce your energy consumption as much as possible. So the heat exchanger, the way it does it is you have a heating element that sits within the boiler. Okay, we'll just use this as an example. You have a heating element that sits within the boiler. And then a heat exchanger runs a copper coil. It doesn't always have to be copper, but it runs a coil. It runs a coil through the boiler and then it comes out of the boiler. And so it runs water through that copper coil and heats it up. At a, and that allows for the water to be separate. Essentially that coil, coil is heating the water for your group heads and the rest of the, the water in here uh, is, is steam for your steam wand. So it's just a, it's truly, it's a really ingenious invention. Um, the heat exchangers will allow you to be able to have two different temperatures on one boiler. Um, and so this machine uses two heat exchangers, one heat exchanger for this um, group head and one heat exchanger for this group head. And what happens in order for um, that water to get um, ready for, the, uh, for brewing, that it has to mix with cold water, okay? It's coming out, again, it's coming out really hot, 
um, too hot. Um, so it has to do mixing and that's what your lower hydraulic assembly does. So it takes your inlet water, basically mixes the inlet with the very hot water in the boiler to come up with the perfect temperature and that's what your solenoids do. So your solenoids are right here. You're going to see that your solenoids are right here and what they're doing, so you got one, two, a two up here, you got a solenoid down here, solenoid right here. And then this is also a solenoid, okay? And so each one of those solenoids, basically what they do is they allow um, different flows of hot water to come in. So you can come in and you can literally adjust these things. Look, look at this right here. See this one? So I had to adjust my solenoid um, so that this, uh, this is my uh, Americanos. This is where I draw Americanos. Well, I wanted that water to be piping hot. So what I did is I came and I altered the flow of the cold water and now my water comes out of here really hot. So um, that's what the solenoids do. But these solenoids basically, they, they make the adjustment for the group heads. You don't want to mess with those. Um, same with this one, it's a solenoid um, for your hot water. This one is the one that it's okay to mess with. And then this solenoid is your automatic water um, refill, basically is what that one uses. Okay, so uh, I want to talk a little bit about how the group head works. Um, so this is the group head. It's this big bell that comes running out of the, basically the boiler. And um, this is the porta filter. It's the uh, handle and piece that you put onto the group head um, in order to uh, draw your shot. And what's interesting about the group head is the way they, they made this thing is essentially it just runs water um, hot water through the group head uh, from the boiler and then draws it back out. So it kind of goes, there's a tube that goes into the group head and then a tube that runs out and your hot boiling water comes into the group head, heats the group head and then goes out again. And then of course through uh, uh, conductive heat, it just uh, transfers uh, this heat uh, onto the porta filter. So it maintains temperature uh, essentially on, on both the uh, group head and the porta filter. So if you've ever touched one of these things, you know they're hot as hell. And they come in a couple different like, they, they can get fancy with those things. They have like, so the E61 is the big brass one, uh, but they also have, they have one called uh, saturated and then there's like semi-saturated. And so there's just different methodologies of the way to, to heat this big piece of metal and ensure that the porta filter is hot. And the reason they do that is so that you don't have to flush um, this entire system every time you want to draw a shot just to make all this metal hot. Otherwise, what you'll be doing is you'll be taking hot uh, water in the boiler and putting it into cold metal. And it, uh, it's, you're not going to have an accurate temperature doing that. If you're interested in starting a coffee truck, um, I would definitely visit the website, uh, Green greenjoecoffeetruck.com. If you throw in a forward slash ad, A-D, I do have a free startup guide for you guys there. Just throw in your email and I'll send you uh, the cost of what it cost me to start my first coffee truck. Hey everybody, it's Vince with... Uh... And that water is under pressure. And what's gonna happen is, let me make sure you can see this. <clears throat> Hey everybody, it's Vince with Green Joe Coffee. Uh, thank you so much for visiting this. Uh... <laughs> uh, feel free to subscribe. It's down below. Uh, below, you want to hit that little. Uh, there's a little. Basically, any alerts whenever we put out a new video. Um, Green Joe Coffee Truck. We're dedicated to uh, pursuing.